A seventh grade. This is language lesson for Friday, April 17th. Now on Friday, April 17th, you should be doing language quiz one. <clears throat> and I will have more instructions for that uh, before you do the quiz. So make sure you check uh, your videos on the morning of Friday, April 17th, because I will have uh, some instructions on your quiz. So check that out. This is for talking about lesson, where are we at? Sorry, lesson six, that is due on Monday. Lesson six is due on Monday, April 20th, and we're just gonna talk a little bit about that. Sixth grade, seventh grade, sorry, seventh grade, this is seventh grade, oh man. This is just a review of adjective clauses. What is a clause? How are clauses and phrases different? Like, different. A clause has a subject and a verb, okay, remember that. Adjective clauses are clauses that begin with the relative pronouns either who, which, or that. So like, that man over there who is wearing a hat. Who is wearing a hat is a clause describing man. Who, which, and that. Okay, so in the first part, you're picking out the adjective clause and putting an arrow to the word that it modifies. Remember, adjective clauses Put brackets around the clause. They always modify the word that comes right before the relative pronoun. Okay, so you have your who, which, or that. So number two, the God of Israel is he that giveth great strength and power unto his people. Put that in brackets and put an arrow to he. They can be in the middle of a sentence. The great barrier, this is number four, the great barrier reef, which, so there's your bracket, which is a chain of coral reefs. And then you have to stop there because the Great Barrier Reef needs the verb stretches with it, okay? So you have your relative pronoun, which is a chain of coral reefs. The relative pronouns most times is the subject of the clause, which is, is your verb, okay? Which is the subject, is the verb. And that is modifying reef or, yeah, the Great Barrier Reef, however you want to do that. Number eight, Elijah is the prophet who had a contest with who had a contest with the prophets of Baal in brackets with an arrow to prophet. Okay, you've done this, you've done well on this. Okay, adjective clauses. They begin with the relative pronouns. There are only three relative pronouns: who, which, and that, and they modify the word that comes right before the relative pronoun. Diagramming adjective clauses, you, do, you connect the dependent clause or the adjective clause goes underneath the main part of the sentence. So you have the example there. Elijah is the prophet who had a contest with the prophet of Baal. Put the dotted line from the word that the adjective clause modifies. So you have your dotted line from prophet down to the subject, down to the relative pronoun, usually, all right? Do not put anything on that dotted line. An adjective clause does not have anything on the dotted line. You don't put relative pronouns on the dotted line. That's for the adverb clauses and the subordinating conjunction. So the dotted line goes under the word that is being modified, connects from that word to the subject of the dependent clause. Here is the diagram from number nine. This is what number nine, the diagram will look like. Do this entire lesson, but I give you the number nine diagram. Seventh grade, lesson six, number nine. This is what the diagram looks like. Okay, your dependent clause is coming off of an object of the preposition. So check that out. And that is what your diagram looks like. So you may want to write that down right now or get your, have your book out and just put that, a diagram like that, or come back to this video. Or just ignore it and do it on your own. However you choose, but I give you that one right there. Let's just look quickly at your spelling words and then I'll let you go. <clears throat> spelling words are words 
synonyms from different languages. So these words, they're all English words that, I mean, that we know, but the, the words, the Anglo-Saxon is English, okay? French and Latin. So these are how we would say the words, but they come from these uh, languages. So the Anglo-Saxon is ask, French is question, and Latin is interrogate. They all mean the same thing. I ask you, I question you, I interrogate you. And there again is, uh, we talk about using words in context, or uh, I forget exactly what it's called, but using words that, so, so when you use this, if you use the word interrogate, usually you don't say, I ask you if you had a good day. You don't say, I interrogate you about your good day. Okay, interrogate is a strong sense of asking. Usually you interrogate a prisoner or something like that. Okay, so it's interesting. Uh, the connot connotation of the word, how you, which word you would use. End, finish, conclude. Fair, beautiful, attractive. Fear, terror, trepidation. Kingly, royal, regal. Help, aid, assist. Rise, mount, and ascend. Right? Those are your spelling words. Do the odds for lesson six and the entire spelling part for Monday, please. Monday, April the 20th. Thank you very much.